A seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet Williams steam locomotive, part 75. Pipe bending and annealing to soften the copper tubing. More silver soldering as I replace BSP fittings with ME fittings. In common with most metals, the more frequently that you bend the metal, the harder it becomes. This is called work hardening. This particular piece of copper piping has been bent too many times, and now it will not bend any further. Before I anneal this piece of copper pipe, I'm going to silver solder an ME union onto the other end of the pipe. ME unions are very different to BSP unions. The fittings are physically larger, and altogether I think they look quite ugly on small pieces of pipe. That's why I use ME unions, which are far more refined and designed for model engineering. You can see the difference in the size of the union nut. To anneal a piece of copper, what you need to do is heat it to a cherry red colour. What I'm doing first though, is heating the general area that I want to bend, and then I slow down and work my way right along it. This video is running at four times normal speed, because it's quite a slow process. Heating the metal to a cherry red colour is about right. It's not a good idea to overheat the metal, you can see the correct colours in this clip. After the annealing process, the surface of the metal needs cleaning before silver soldering. I'm cleaning the part of the pipe that I want to silver solder using some Scotsbrite. Here I'm checking the fit of the union cone before silver soldering it in place and making sure of course that I have the union nut on the pipe first. And here is the pipe secured in place to the water collector. I'm tightening the union nut in place using a barco adjustable spanner and although a lot of people don't like them, I do. They never round the edges of bolts, or union nuts for that matter. These two unions supply water to the twin axle pumps and the hand pump. And the pipe union that's currently been tightened is fitted to the end of the piece of pipe that supplies water to the twin axle pumps. These may not be the neatest silver soldered joints that I've ever done, but they are very strong and that's all I need them to be. I always use too much silver solder, but it's better than too little. What I'm doing at the moment underneath the locomotive is retightening two BSP union nuts, one to each of the axle pumps. This took a long time and was very tedious. But I got there in the end, and here is the job so far. The only other connection to make to the tank is the one to the water bypass pipe. I'll probably straighten out some of this copper piping in the fullness of time. Some of it was already there. Here is the hand pump, and as you can see, a piece of copper pipe goes from the hand pump and winds its way up to the union connector that you've just seen. The output of both the hand pump and the axle pumps will need to be combined before they go to the check valve on the boiler. I really am trying to keep the piping as neat as possible, using as few pipes as possible also. And that's why I made the combination water balancer, with the two pump outlets and a drain tap on the central fitting. I don't often get confused, and I'm not blaming it on age or any other thing, other than maybe boredom and going into autopilot. Here, using a brand new piece of quarter inch diameter copper pipe, I'm first of all bending one end to fit the water T piece, which is from the water bypass valve but I'm bending the pipe in entirely the wrong direction. This pipe does not fit on the tank. It's supposed to go from the water bypass T-piece to the water bypass valve. As it turns out, the pipe length was perfect for where it needed to go, underneath the boiler to an adapter which feeds the check valve at the left-hand side at the front of the boiler. A bit of a diversion from pipe bending, I think I need it. What I'm doing is making a BSP fitting to allow a piece of quarter inch pipe to fit in a BSP union nut. I'm doing this completely freehand using the union nut as a gauge. This is a piece of scrap brass that I once used as a test for a copper plating bath that I have. The first thing to do is to reduce the diameter of this piece of brass so that it fits in the hole in the union nut. I'm initially using my general purpose carbide tip tool, but this leaves a rounded end. You will see me squaring it off using the parting tool later on. 
Now it's time to centre drill the part, followed by drilling the part all the way through using a quarter inch drill bit. Then it's back to the turning operation to shorten the part, removing the test area. The final part of this operation is just to use a file to remove the sharp edge. Here I'm using the parting tool to square off the end, the bit that fits inside the union nut, through the hole. I'm still using the parting tool to reduce the outer diameter and this needs to be such so it fits inside the threaded part of the union nut. Also was happy that that was OK, I simply parted off the piece. This is an ME type union nut and it's in the chuck so I can get the angle. From experience I've got a good idea what the angle is, it's 60 degrees. Here I'm lining up a cutting tool with the angle, what could be simpler? I don't even need to adjust the top slide. All I have to do now is fit the original piece back in the chuck and machine it to the same angle just by keeping the tool in the same place. And that is it for this episode, more in the next one. I'll be glad when the piping's over with. But it's all part of the job. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.